हेलो एवरीवन माय सेल्फ हरमीत कौर कोश वेलकम टू दिस लेक्चर ऑन प्राइवेट टेलीविजन न्यूज मीडिया एंड रिप्रेजेंटेशन इन इंडिया दिस लेक्चर इज पार्ट ऑफ योर पेपर ऑन न्यूज इन सोसाइटी एज हैज बीन डिस्कस इन द मॉड्यूल ऑन न्यूज एंड आइडियोलॉजी न्यूज इज नॉट एन ऑब्जेक्टिव इंकोडिंग एंड ट्रांसमिशन ऑफ अ रियालिटी आउट देयर बट अ डेफिनेटिव कंस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ दैट रियालिटी involving a series of subjective choices the process of news selection and presentation are mediated by structural factors including social economic and political that condition what can be said or not an interrogation of who owns and runs the media and under what structural conditions is therefore central to deconstructing the ideological nature of news text such an inquiry constitutes the political economic approach itself embedded in the tradition of critical media scholarship this is also the lens with which one must endeavor to understand private news television content in india in this vein this module attempts to briefly sketch out the business of television news industry in india followed by a discussion on news and representation with special attention to how constructs of class gender and nation are configured within its narratives the business of news media the liberalization of the media in india which was concomitant to the opening of the economy in 1991 is a story of massive corporatization entailing a transformation of existing media institutions and growth of news ones as competitive businesses the highlight of the story is the phenomenal growth of private television media which ended the monopoly of the government owned channel doordarshan in just over a decade the number of television networks in india was more than the those in the whole of north and south america put together the media expansion in india was concurrent to similar shifts in a number of countries set in motion by the processes of the globalization as well as the spread of satellite technology much like its counterparts in the west the media industry here saw increasing concentration with a select group of corporate media houses which was achieved through a spate of mergers and acquisitions as also through cross media ownership across print television and radio an important trend to note here is the entry of non media entities in the sector some of who have been leading players such as mukesh ambani kumar mangalam birla and abe oswal the corporatization and consolidation is also visible in news channels which are almost half of the almost 800 tv channels in india what is perhaps a more serious concern is the corruption and lack of transparency in how news business are owned financed and run as evident in a number of recent revelations of sham transactions fraudulent trade practices and black money being used to fund the news media in india this insidious nexus between politics big business and prominent journalists was disclosed at length in the infamous radio tape controversy as such it exists within the context of political ownership of a number of channels by influential politicians such as by the reddy and the maran families in south despite this scenario media ownership remains largely unregulated the recommendations made by television regulatory authority of india try on media ownership and cross media ownership as well as mergers and acquisitions have not been accepted by the government and the issue of political ownership 
has not been discussed either by try or the government notwithstanding the nature of ownership all media houses today actually run through sponsorship whose share according to even industry sources has gone up substantially since the 2000s within a five span beginning late 90s there was almost a 500% expansion in advertising revenues for television channels in the 2000 almost a dozen me big media firms emerged out their family gab to get publicly quoted half of which were valued at over rupees 1000 crore each on stock market with the largest company bennett Coleman making profits almost a hundred times in first two decades after liberalization. The drive for advertising revenue is now evident in the increasing intervention of advertisers or managers in newsrooms. Advertisers have moved from the appeal domain to the demand domain, wherein they expect better placement of ads, positive coverage and control of the editorial environment. The media houses also generate content that would please the advertiser. The advertiser is the audience. The blurring of functional boundaries between editorial and business departments is also visible in an increasing continuum between news and advertisements. One can see this in the ed editorial, wherein the advertisement are not recognizable in themselves, but merge within what might appear like a report or a feature. Advertising thus makes its presence felt in the media, not only through the conventional 30 second commercial spot, but increasingly through Kasi spaces which might include brand placement in what anchors or celebrities wear, hold, say and do. A more sinister form of this nexus is phenomena of paid news which was exposed during the 2009 elections in center and assembly. The race for revenue also translates into the competitive race for TRPs, that is television rating points. High TRP signifies more popularity for the channel and helps attract higher advertising share. What is clear is that profit is now the sole aim of a private media enterprises, including news organizations and this profit as will be soon is garnered through a commodification of news. News content and consumptions as a cultural industry, broadcast television runs through what Curran and Morley term as a concealed subsidy system. Viewers cost for access to TV is limited, so advertisers pay the networks for airtime and viewers pay indirectly by watching the advertisements and its messages embedded in programs. So, news is also constructed to enhance the consumption of one, the news product itself, which brings in larger share of advertising and two, the commodities that the advertisers sponsor within its broadcast. Even though the ways in which the structures of ownership and pressures of advertising, beer and news content may not always be established in direct causal ways, but scholars have noted some clear trends. It has been observed how news content is being increasingly tuned to the needs and desires of the urban middle classes. This is because the urban middle classes are also now the consuming classes. That is, they are potential consumers for the product that the sponsors advertise. There is therefore a simultaneous focus on selling and construction of the ideology of consumption tied to individualism, free choice and good life. 
along with the staple content of political and business news there is also thus an emphasis on features on shopping lifestyles films food health fitness spirituality travel movie stars and fashion the audience are viewed as consumers who are told that their ambition to climb up the socio economic ladder can be met through the consumption of right products the commodification of news also means that there is an implicit censorship of any content that might harm corporate interest the practice has been fueled by the growth of a public relations industry which is geared towards the specification aims of boosting the brand and market of corporate client the pr the pr personnel build relations with journalists and push in favorable stories about the company and its products or services or neutralize any negative stories that appear in the public domains celebrities are also used in the business an example is the massive media campaign carried out by the coca cola to contain the fallout of the research published by the center for science and environment that the drink contained heavy pesticides actor amir khan was hired by the company to declare that the drink was absolutely safe which implied thus that the study was false with the commercial focus on the interest of urban consuming classes the coverage of issues related to urban and rural poor are either obliterated or low on priority almost 75% of the country does not make news and pressing issues such as demolitions and farmer suicides draw no attention compared to fashion shows and sensex stumps perhaps the only time rural india comes into picture is in relation to a tragedy of dramatic nature albeit only for a flash even when journalists are keen to cover rural india they are not encouraged by their news organizations reflecting on her experience as a tv journalist trivedi 2016 highlights how television producers do not want to send reporters to the hinterland to bring pictures of a half naked children suffering from malnutrition it is so much easier to sell a fashion show than a poor woman walking miles for a pot of water in a drought affected area others have however observed some positive developments for instance as rao 2008 notes despite the obsession with celebrities and urban life dictated by profit consideration some journalists have ventured into the villages and among ordinary people who grapple every day with caste and class issues as such television news may also have a provisional also have had a provincial effect of enabling the social political and economic empowerment of small town non metropolitan or provisional actors despite these narratives the predominant thread of news scholarship is the rural india is largely missing on news screens this has been corroborated in the longitudinal study of prime time television news by the center for media studies their monitoring of six news channels in the period 2008 to 2012 revealed that issues related to rural india were less than 2% of the total coverage in all the channels gender and representation much like class gender is also an organizational principle of society and is constituted within the realm of self family workplace public sphere and the nation a significant development of the post 90s media is that large number of women are being drawn into as a professionals 
As journalists, they are able to take up diverse roles including in the hard news area of politics and economics which until recently were all male bisexuals. A question is whether women's presence in media outlets has made a significant difference to how their issues are represented. Writing in the early years, Joseph and Sharma in 1994 noted that media were not giving more sustained or in-depth coverage of gender issues. They continued to highlight incidents rather than the processes and have no commitment to probe how women's issues are linked with the structural realities. Even when issues are taken up, these received a fragmented treatment and patriarchal understanding tended to prevail. Also the experts on news, especially on hard issues, were still largely male. Scholars emphasize that this picture has not changed that much. They also underline that even when women's issues get media attention, they usually revolve around the stories of women from privileged urban India. While media celebrities, beauty pageants, it lends no space to the achievements of women from rural India. Scant attention is also given to the caste, class and gender violence faced by them. The media has almost come to believe that the, at least for the urban middle class, women goals of liberation have been realized. Trivedi in 2006 notes that while hours of television programming are devoted to the story of Jessica Lal, a model who was murdered by the son of influential politician at a bar in Delhi. But no one wants to invest the same energy in reporting the stories of Shenaz, Medina and Zohra Bibi, a woman from non-metropolitan India, who were victims of an apathetical judicial system. Perhaps she says the page 3 driven media requires only beautiful, glamorous women made for television and color supplements. To wake up to the reality of hostile witnesses and a justice system that is horribly skewed in favor of rich and powerful. What about the fact that 99% of Dalit women who are raped and tortured get no justice from any court? And why does nobody petition the president or take up their cases with the same ferocity? There is no doubt that stories such as of Lal deserve attention. But what scholars call attention to is that so do stories of other women who face inevitable injustice in their marginalized locations. Many believe that the protest against the gang rape of Jyoti Singh Pandey on 16 December 2012 which were to great extent galvanized by the national television news media was a watershed movement in representation of women's issues. This is especially as young students from universities and colleges, both male and female, came out to register their support. More importantly, as a result of the momentum created by these protests, the government was forced to set up a committee, Justice Committee, to review the rape legislation which was open to the public responses and received thousands of submissions. Many of the committee's recommendations were later incorporated in the amended legislation on rape, viewing the events in a positive light. Philippos in 2013 says, it should also be noted that unusual longevity accorded to the gang rape incident in terms of news cycles where generally news breaks die by the minute provided significant opportunities for expressions that were grasped by activities and academics alike. 
the exceptional articulation of women activists who long years of work on the central issues of violence against women had never been the attention it deserved got play whether through newspapers columns television studios discussions or personal blogs for arguably the first time in the history of indian media which had traditionally deemed women's issue as soft news the fact that the justice verma committee received over 60000 responses on reforming the criminal justice system testifies to that unprecedented engagement this unprecedented coverage around this incident is a result of many factors however here the issues of newsrooms compositions need to be brought in focus as an industry national tv news media largely comprises middle class english speaking professionals most of them trained in private institutions in urban areas this is also true for hindi news channels even given their background there is natural proclivity that both journalists and editors have towards story based in urban areas and affecting their own kind in other words news producers have come to associate the self as the viewer the industry also employs a larger number of women from middle class backgrounds as news anchors journalists and editors as educated working women who are negotiating with city life the story of jessica or jyoti singh pande strikes a deeper chord many journalists work late night and have to commute on the same unsafe roads on which pande was raped in some ways their own familiarity with the context worked to galvanize the coverage of this incident on such scale and duration what is equally important to consider however is that over the decades the women's movement has made a gradual impact on media in how it has catalyzed events and processes that do make news it has generated knowledge and understanding that help shape editorial views and it has willingly enter the consciousness and influence the perception of at least two generations of media persons especially but not only women the hours of screen time including debate and discussions around around this incident should be regarded as a very positive development but it does not take away the reality of the relative absence of marginalized women in news media spaces tell tum de points to continuing lack of stories of atrocities on dalit women on the news screen he asked why all those scandal bearers did not shed a single tear over the rape and murder of surekha and priyanka bhatmange that was committed in a festive mode by a Kerala ji villagers underlying the selective nature of media coverage on rape a crime which has gone up across india since 1991 including delhi where it rose to 230% in the period 1991 to 2011 he says if we do not know many cases it is not because they were less brutal but simply because they were never highlighted in the media if one thinks of the build up of public anger against the increasing rape cases peaking naturally at the point the question remains as to why even the rapes thereafter and there have been a spate of them for ignored as business as usual the fact remains that like any other media issues that flared up in public in recent times the media played a big role in making an exception of the case 
perhaps the issue again is not that dalit women or the stories are not represented at all for that is not the case but that these never became an object of media generated campaigns as others do constructing nation as has been discussed the representative gaze of the private news television industry is largely on the urban consuming classes these classes are also the locus through which nationhood is imagined and defined this narrow exclusive construct can be understood in the context of shifting political and economic scenario of globalizing india as chanduri says economic changes necessarily entail a shift in the public discourse within which historic concepts are invested with news meaning for instance the mixed economy of the nehruian era post independence plays on emphasis on socialism and distributive justice and within this discourse freedom was understood as commitment to political economic and social equity for all sections of the people and particularly the dispossessed the nation was imagined through these very masses with globalization marking a shift to consumer capitalism these notions have have stood to be transformed and freedom and autonomy are largely understood to mean freedom to choose and consume which exist only for the middle and upper classes freedom is thus implicated within the ethos of free market and in order has come to valorize in individuality selfhood desire and the concomitant disposal of any ethic of collective responsibility towards the larger masses within this context one can also deconstruct gender and representation gender has always been a social and symbolic resource that has been exploited in the service of nation for instance the indian nationalist thought iconized the image of the hindu self effacing woman which signified tradition in opposition to western values but now with the change in the imagination of the nation a new kind of iconization of middle class woman and a man has come into picture attached to the very ideas of freedom to consume and persuade of good life these idea get legitimized within the public sphere through a sustained ideological discourse within all segments of media the new india woman of today is typically the corporate icon who is career driven youthful lifestyle conscious and alongside also a homemaker gendered concepts are used to refashion the middle class household or the family as a site for increased consumption by tying feminism to the project of consumption media have thus impeded it of the political contents in which freedom is equated with collective social justice and stands anethical to the goals of free market at the forefront thus is an imaginary of globalized india which hides the reality of vast indian heartland beneath its sheen for as bitbill says reality does not always give into a comfortable middle class discourse india behind the facade of skyscrapers and flyovers its multi millionaire industry tycoons it's just setting film stars and celebrated technological geniuses is a country where most of the population live in unimaginable squalor to millions clean drinking water remains a mirage high child death rate female infanticides broads and femmes might not occupy prime time news television discourse but they lurk in the peripheral threatening to em- embrass a careful constructed articulation of an emboldened 
nation by its affluent citizens. In essence, who gets visibility within the screen space is ideologically linked to who visibility within the visions of economic globalization, which has deep implication for both the conception and practice of democracy. The conclusion. This module discuss how economic liberation has facilitated massive capital inflows within previously secure territories, which has helped refashion media institutions as profit-making corporate enterprises. There is a multiplicity of media, but any notion of plurality and democracy this might allude to is deluding because these are controlled by select corporate houses, which has a strong bearing on who gets represented within the media scape and how. The nexus of advertising and editorial has meant that news content is increasingly tailored to cater to urban consuming classes, both men and women. Eclipsed from the screens are the vast majority of poorer masses and their concerns. I hope you enjoyed this lecture. For more details, please read the module carefully and attempt the questions at the end. Thank you.